Hello everyone, welcome to Nesso Academy. In this lecture, we will understand the concept of recursive functions. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The first topic of this lecture is recursive functions. First, I will introduce you to recursive functions. I will make you understand what are recursive functions. Then we will move to the second topic where we will understand a classic example of recursive functions which is factorial of n. So these are the topics of this lecture. Let's start with the first one that is recursive functions. So what are recursive functions? A recursive function is a function that calls itself. So think of a recursive function as a function that has the capability to call itself within its own body. And the technique is called recursion. Think of recursion as the alternative to loops. So through recursion, we can repeat something if we want to do that. And it makes our code more shorter and cleaner. Apart from this, it also makes our code more understandable. So these are the points associated with recursive functions. Now let's see how a recursive function looks like by considering the syntax of a recursive function. This is the syntax that we can follow. Here we need to specify the return type, then the name of the function and then the parameters that we want to pass. Then within braces we can write the code like this. We can write the if block and the else block. To the if block, we can pass the termination condition which is quite important to terminate the function. This is important because recursive function will continue to execute and it will run forever if we do not provide the termination condition. Now based on the condition, some value will be returned. If this condition is true, then the value will be returned. Otherwise, the function will call itself with modified parameters and then the final result will be returned. So, this is how a recursive function looks like. Here you can observe that the function is calling itself within its own body. That's why this function is called the recursive function. Now, here we have the two parts, if and else. In recursion, we call these two parts with some names. This if block is called the base case and this is called the recursive case. Now let's try to understand what is the meaning of base case and recursive case. This specific if block is called the base case because it allows us to solve the base problem or the smallest version of the big problem that we are trying to solve. Think of this function as the big problem that we want to solve. And base case represents the smallest version of the same problem. So with the help of base case, we solve the smallest version of the problem. That is why it is called the base case, because it helps us in solving the base problem. Then we have the else block. This is called the recursive case. We call this a recursive case because it allows us to solve the big problem recursively with the help of smaller versions of the same problem. Here we provide smaller versions of the same problem by passing the modified parameters to the function. So this is the recursive case because we solve the big problem recursively through smaller problems or we can say repeatedly through smaller problems. So with this, I hope it is clear to you what is the meaning of base case and recursive case. Any recursive function is formed from base case and recursive case. Base case is needed to terminate the recursive function and recursive case is needed to solve the problem recursively. So that is the essence of recursive functions. We solve the big problem through smaller versions of the problem recursively until we reach the base case. After we reach the base case, some value will be returned and we continue to return until we reach the final output. So with this, we have understood the concept of recursion properly. Now we are done with the first topic that is 
recursive functions. Let's move to the second topic where we will understand factorial of n, which is the classic example of recursive functions. So, what is the factorial of n? Factorial of n gives the product of positive integers from 1 up to n. So, factorial of n is same as product of positive integers from 1 to n, where n represents some number. This is the formula we can follow. This is how we can represent n factorial. We specify n and then the exclamation mark. This is n factorial. n factorial is same as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on up to 1. Here you can observe that n factorial is same as product of positive integers from 1 up to n. Now, if you observe this formula carefully, we can easily replace n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on up to 1 by n minus 1 factorial by applying the same formula of n factorial because we know that n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on up to 1. So, it is clear that n minus 1 times n minus 2, so on up to 1 is same as n minus 1 factorial. So, let's replace this by n minus 1 factorial. We will get the formula n factorial equal to n times n minus 1 factorial. Now, here we can observe that in order to calculate n factorial, which is a big problem to solve, we need to know n minus 1 factorial, which is the smaller version of the same problem. So, we are solving the big problem through the smaller version of the same problem. If we already know what is n minus 1 factorial, then we can easily calculate the value for n factorial. This is the essence of recursion. We know through recursion, we solve big problems by solving smaller versions of the same problem until we reach the smallest version of the problem which can easily be solved. Now, let's write the recursive program for this specific problem. Here is the program. Here we have this factorial function. This is the recursive function because here we are calling the same function within its own body. We have factorial of n here. The parameter is n. And here is the base case which represents the base problem or the smallest version of the problem that we are trying to solve. We want to calculate the factorial of n. We can easily calculate 1 factorial because 1 factorial is 1. Here we are doing the same thing. The base case is if n is equal to 1, then return 1. We know that if we want to calculate 1 factorial, then the result will be 1. That's why we are returning 1 when n is equal to 1. So, this is the base case. I have chosen the base case as 1 factorial because 1 factorial is quite easy to solve and it is considered as the smallest version of the problem which is n factorial. Now, here we have the else block which represents the recursive case. Here I am using the formula of n factorial. We know in order to calculate n factorial, we need to find n times n minus 1 factorial. Here I have written the same thing, n times factorial of n minus 1. So, I am solving the big problem in terms of the smaller version of the same problem. Here the result of n times factorial of n minus 1 will be returned, which is the result of n factorial. That is what we need to find. So, this function allows us to calculate factorial of n. Here we are calling this factorial of n function. Here we have the main function. And within the main function, I am calling factorial of 4. I want to display the result of factorial of 4. Now, what is factorial of 4? We know this already that factorial of 4 is 24 because 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 24. So, Let's try to find out whether we will get the same output or not from this specific program. 
For this purpose, we need to traverse this program. Here we are calling factorial of 4. So, we will start from factorial of 4. We know at this moment, n is equal to 4. This condition is not true, therefore the else block will execute. Here we have return n times factorial of n minus 1. We already know the value of n which is 4. Here we want to calculate 4 times factorial of 3 because 4 minus 1 is 3. Now in order to do this multiplication, we first need to resolve factorial of 3. We do not know what is the value of factorial of 3 at this moment. So we first need to solve this. So clearly from factorial of 4, we need to shift the control to factorial of 3. Here you can observe the recursion in practice. From factorial of 4, we have shifted the control to factorial of 3. The function factorial is calling itself within its own body, that's recursion. Now we are at factorial of 3. At this moment, n is equal to 3. This condition is not true. Hence, the else block will execute. Here we have return n times factorial of n minus 1. n will be replaced by 3. We will get 3 times factorial of 2. In order to calculate 3 times factorial of 2, we first need to resolve factorial of 2. So, the control needs to shift from factorial of 3 to factorial of 2. Now, n is 2. Again, this condition is not true. Now, we have 2 times factorial of 1. So, we now need to shift the control to factorial of 1. Now, at this moment, n is equal to 1. Therefore, this condition is true. And because this condition is true, 1 will be returned from this function. This is because we know factorial of 1 is 1. And we are getting 1 from this function. Now, this value will be returned to the caller of the factorial of 1, which is factorial of 2. So, we will return to this place. Now, we have 1 here. In reality, we have reached this place, factorial of n minus 1. This will be replaced by 1. And here we know the value of n is 2. So, we have 2 times 1, which is equal to 2. I hope this idea is clear to you. Now, we got 2 for this specific call. And now, we have returned 2. So, we need to return value 2 to the caller of factorial of 2, which is factorial of 3. So, the control shifts to this specific call. And now, we have received the value 2 here. We know at this moment, n is equal to 3. So, we have 3 times 2, which is equal to 6. This value will also be returned to the caller, that is factorial of 4. Here, we will receive 6. And here, we have n as 4. So, we have 4 times 6, which is equal to 24. We are getting the final result as 24. And this value will be returned to the caller of factorial of 4, which is the main function. So, at this place, we will receive the value 24. This value will be displayed on the screen. We will get the output as 24. So, this program is working correctly. We know that this program has the capability to calculate factorial of a specific number. Please note that here, I am not checking the condition for 0. If we want to calculate 0 factorial, then we can replace this double equal sign by less than equal. Then we would be able to get 0 factorial as well. 0 factorial is also equal to 1. So, if we want to calculate 0 factorial, we will get 1 as the result. I have written the simpler version of the problem of factorial of n. I hope this is clear to you. Also, I want to mention this, that writing recursive version of the problem is quite simple compared to the loop version. Here, we can observe that we have used the formula directly. This is quite simple to understand. Anyone can understand what we are doing here. If we write the loop version for the same problem, then we will observe that it is not that easy to understand. Beginner has to struggle understanding the concept. Although it might be easier to write, but it might not be easier to understand. 
but recursive version is easier to understand because we can see the formula in front of our eyes. So, writing the recursive version of the problem makes our code easier to understand and of course, it is much cleaner compared to the loop version. So, with this, we have understood this example properly. Now, we know how recursion works behind the scenes. With this, we are done with the second topic also and this means we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.